It's round seven of the U.S. Chess Championship, and it looked like for just a moment that we might have a little bit more drama here in St. Louis, because within about 15 minutes of the start of the rounds, one of the players was seen leaving the playing hall, and it was Lenier Dominguez, but he was not leaving because he was up to anything nefarious. He was leaving the playing hall because he was already done with his game, and he just won a game in 10 moves against Elshon Mora Diabati, and that's the game that we are going to be going over and reviewing now. And then as a special bonus, I'm going to throw in the actual shortest game in terms of total moves ever played in the U.S. Championship. But this is kind of a rare sight, a very unfortunate thing for Elshon, who I know is having a particularly bad tournament, but I see Elshon all the time. I consider him a friend. Uh, but for, you know, whatever reason, this tournament is just simply not going his way. But uh, this is the game. It's Elshon, sorry, it's Lenier Dominguez with the white pieces going up against Elshon Moradiabadi. And the game that we get is a Petrov defense. And from this position, white did take on E5. And black here has the option to play many, many games gambits, such as the Stafford gambit, perhaps the Jobava elephant gambit with pawn to d5, all sorts of fun stuff. But obviously, this is the US Championship. This is a top elite event. We're not going to see any silly stuff. We're going to see pawn to d6, kicking the knight back and then recapturing on e4. Now, white here plays the most common move, pawn to d4. Pawn goes to d5, bishop to d3. And all of this is very normal. And I'm going to leave a link to the press conference, to the interview that they did with Lenier Dominguez at the end of this game. He gave a lot of really useful insight as to how this mistake uh, that occurs in the next couple moves here potentially happens uh, because he said that Elshon is not a uh, he's not somebody that plays the Petrov frequently so potentially he might run into some sort of move order tricks and, and Dominguez was very tricky with how he decided to play the next several moves because up to here we have a totally normal position and black here actually has to choose from a lot of different options there's moves like knight to c6 there's bishop to e7 there's bishop to d6 all of these are very common moves but in this game Elshon plays bishop to e7 and if your opponents play this line take note of exactly where this bishop is this is going to end up being a tactical target in the future um, but in this exact specific line there is a little bit of a trap that you need to know if you're playing this with the black pieces because now white can just get castled and after bishop to f5 this is where uh potentially Elshon got tricked because Lenier admitted in the interview that he's always played this move, rook to e1, which is like the most common move. It's what the engine suggests. It's like a very logical way to continue here for white. But instead, perhaps sensing that Elshon is not as familiar with this opening, he decides to go with pawn to c4, which is another very logical move that white is likely to play either here or on another move. Maybe after rook e1, you can play c4. It's the kind of move that white is going to end up playing in this position. And what black should do is just just accept that they need to go here. Black should get castled, and this is something that's been seen in multiple top-level games. However, after pawn to c4, Elshon makes the mistake of getting castled right away. And at first, this might not look like there's anything tragically wrong with this, but already white has set a very cunning trap. And the point is that you can take now on d5, and if black takes, which is exactly what happened, uh, you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. And if you don't take, you're in a lot of, lot of trouble too, because you've just kind of lost a pawn for no reason. So obviously the point is black is going to take, and this is where white has a surprisingly strong winning move. And uh, I'll give you just a moment to try to figure it out for yourselves, but it does have to do with the fact that this bishop is loose on e7, and you might be able at some point at some point to use this rook on e1 in order to make some tactical threats. And that's why the winning move is bishop takes e4. And after this, Elshon resigned the game. And let's try to understand why for just a second. Now, if you do take with the queen, uh, it's pretty easy to see how this wins for white. You play rook to e1, and you're attacking the bishop. So no matter where the queen goes, doesn't matter where she goes, uh, you're going to be picking up this bishop. And the other thing that might happen is instead of taking with the queen, if you sense that, you might instead decide to take with the bishop and play bishop takes e4. But now white has a similar way of setting up these tactics on the e-file by starting with knight to c3, attacking both of these things, and wherever the queen goes, there's multiple ways that you can perhaps keep this bishop defended, but wherever the queen goes, you just will simply take this, and now you play rook to e1, and black is just going to be losing a piece. It doesn't matter where you decide to move your queen, uh, you're just simply dropping a piece off the board. So just like that, we saw a 10-move Petrov win uh, for 
for Lenier Dominguez. And it's just this little trick of not of black not being able to castle in this position. You need to take on c4 and then get castled to prevent a lot of these tricks from happening. However, uh, this was not the shortest game in U.S. Chess Championship history. I do just kind of want to point out this other game that was a five mover, so twice as fast as the previous game. Here's your bonus game. This is John Peters first uh, Kamran Shirazi. I believe this was from 1984. I'll put the actual answer to what year it was in the description below. But this was a Sicilian defense, uh, and it came as a wing gambit. <laughs> uh, and after pawn to a3, we saw pawn to d5, which is actually the most common way for black to play the wing gambit in this position. And after white took here, uh, John Peters took back on d5. White decided to re-grab this pawn on b4. And can you spot here the reason that this is actually losing for white? Well, if you found queen to e5 <laughs> lining up with the king and attacking the rook you would have spotted the way to win the fastest game so i hope you guys enjoyed that one it was a really quick one so make sure you hit that subscribe button as fast as you can bye